assume everybody in this room has been to the toilet already today, <laughs> at least two or three times. Um, the thing is, um, 2.6 billion people in the world do not have a clean or safe toilet. That's roughly a third of the population because we're more than 7 billion people right now. So that's a lot. And I would like to show you what, what that's like. So it's probably um, unnecessary that I wrote on sanitary wet health hazard. It, it looks like that. Um, you can see people just go to the toilet. There are rags around. It's just a pit in the ground. There is um, no running water. So um, your feces is just uh, in a pit in the ground. I have seen way worse than this. Very often you have the shower next to it and then you have water puddles on the left and on the right. Um, that's slowly mixed with the urine and the feces from your toilet. And the problem with that is um, the diarrhea and uh, malaria are caused by toilets like this one. Um, those two um, illnesses, malaria and diarrhea, are the two main reasons for early childbirth. There are five big reasons why well, children don't live to, to see their fifth birthday in developing countries. Toilets are two of them. Um, um, a way to improve a toilet like that is to, to build a house. This is really just walls around the pit in the ground. It's still no infrastructure. Um, you just build walls, um, still have your hole in the ground. Maybe you put a chair with a hole on top of the hole, but that's it. And to make it even cleaner, you take some, some leaves, um, collect them, uh, you, you dry them and then you burn them. And with the ashes, uh, you can fill your pit and then it, it's a little drier. And also it smells almost like nothing afterwards. That's really impressive. Depending on what leaves you, you use to burn, it might even smell nice in the toilet once you have this installed. So that's a really big improvement to, to the first toilet I showed you. And then my favorite thing in the world is the tip tap um, water supply. In many areas, you do not have running water and people just go fetch water for two kilometers, walk one direction, get a bucket of water, go back home. And then um, hand washing is not a normal thing for them because it's so much work to get the water. They want to use it for cooking and for drinking. With the tip tap, you, you have um, this little stick that you step on and then you will um, make this bucket drop and just spill a little bit of water only while you step on here. There are two good uh, things about this. One is you do not touch the bucket with your dirty hands. And the second is you use very, very little water. And I know a project in Uganda where um, child mortality dropped by 80 to 90 percent after those tip taps were installed in a village. Um, so education is a big part about that whole health risk toilet thing. Um, what happens to your feces when you're done? So there are two ways um, that are very common um, to treat the feces. One is you just get it out with a bucket and the other one is you get it out with a hose and then you bring it away. Um, I will get back at that later. <laughs> Please remember this image, it's important. Um, so now let me show you the very typical kinds of toilets you, you have in many countries. Uh, we have the basic ones on the bottom and the more advanced ones on top. I will start with this one here. Here you just go to the toilet and you pay a guy probably $18 a year to empty this thing for you, like the two guys we just saw. And you, you just poop and hopefully you will have something to wash your hands nearby but it's a very basic outhouse. If you're smart, you cover it with ashes so it doesn't smell so bad. But you still have flies that still can contaminate your food, give you diarrhea or mosquitoes that can breed in there. The, the larvae are really happy about the, the wet environment and then you get malaria. Then there's a different one. That's already much better. You have two pits. So the <laughs> idea behind this is that once one of the pits is full, you move your toilet building to the other pit. And then this can remain there for six more months. And then you empty it and you have um, fertilizer for your fields. And once this is empty, you move the house back 
um, let that sit for a while um, while you fill this one up and then you empty it again to have more fertilizer. In this case, you don't have to pay any guy to clean it for you because you can just take the stuff out yourself. Then we have a way more advanced one. This one is called the VIP toilet. It's uh, called a ventilation improved toilet because you have a little bit of ventilation. You also have a little membrane here that will catch the flies, kill them, mosquitoes as well. Way safer. But that one costs about $100 in construction, which is more than an annual income for many people. And then you have the really fancy one. Um, that's a cool one where you separate the urine from the feces. Um, and then you can use this uh, also for fertilizer, like in this toilet system. And the urine, you just um, pour it away at some point when, when the bucket is full. So let's get back to um, those two where you do not have fertilizer, but where a guy comes to clean it. We, we just saw the guy, um, two of them. Uh, yeah, this is a little more on the, on the VIP toilet. You see toilet here, toilet there, always back and forth. So usually the way you transport feces is in a wheelbarrow because usually the streets are awful. You cannot drive with a car. Very often the streets are flooded. Um, it's really difficult to, to move. So when you remember that the first guy sitting in the pit, he would probably transport it with a wheelbarrow, which he might tip over and then the whole village is trapped. Um, luckily, there are other systems where you, um, when you have a nicer structure, um, get trucks to really pump it out, transport it um, to a sewage water cleaning plant where everything will be treated. So you have your toilet where you produce everything, then it's stored somewhere, goes to the trucks, goes to the cleaning plant, and you have to do nothing, uh, and everything's clean and nice, but you have to be able to afford it and live in a really nice, nice village. Not everybody has that luxury, but it's, it's many, many steps upwards from where we started. Um, let's see. And this would be the, the next step um, in improving infrastructure of toilets. It's plumbing. Um, if you have ever seen plumbing, those pipes are really, really thin. Um, there's a reason for that. If you have plumbing in a city, um, it's usually um, government owned, either by the um, mayor of the city or by um, sort of the, the state government. Um, in this case, it's not, because governments are not always stable. You don't know if you can trust them. Then you have private companies who, who might take care of your sewage. Um, and in this case, because they didn't trust the tri private companies either, because they could be corrupt, we have a group of people who decided to just get together and build it themselves. They took a microcredit, um, built um, their sewage water cleaning system themselves. And this is the reason why the pipes are so thin. This is only uh, their household sewage. It's not for rainwater drainage. If this was a public um, canalization, then it would be much bigger and also transport away the rainwater. Um, so this is a big improvement. You still don't know where the crap is going and if it will be cleaned nicely or if it will just leave the village and go into the next river. But in comparison to the health hazard we had in the first picture, much, much nicer. And then um, Bill and Melinda Gates thought this is still not really what they would want the, the world to be like and said, um, people of the world, reinvent the toilet. We will give you funds for that. Um, come up with ideas. And you might remember this blue toilet from the invitation and also from my first slide. Someone from Switzerland, from EMPA, came up with a toilet that they called Blue Diversion. Um, where well, you have the, the sewage water cleaning inside of the toilet. In this part on the bottom of the toilet, you already have the sewage water cleaning. And I have a slide to show you how that works. You have the toilet itself, where you stand and do what you have to do. And then afterwards, the feces and urine are separated. And then the water gets treated with some membranes and filters um, that will also kill the pathogens, so there is no more risk of diarrhea. 
and then it's um, cleaned even more with chlorine and comes back as the water that you can use to rinse yourself, wash your hands. There's also um, soap um, somewhere here, I think. And it's, it's a safe toilet. Um, thing is, this makes me happy and sad at the same time. Because in Central Europe, uh, infrastructure means health infrastructure, agricultural in infrastructure, electricity, gas, oil, whatnot. And right now we're discussing if internet should also be part of the critical infrastructure. And at the same time, I'm, I'm feeling so happy for everybody who gets to have one of these toilets. So let's just see this as a reminder about how lucky we are in Switzerland.